Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler and today we have another unboxing for you. For those of you that closely follow the channel, you're going to realize that I do unboxings and then reviews kind of in waves. Well, that's because I don't have a consistent flow of knives coming in, so when I get done with one, you'll see unboxings, reviews, sale. Unboxing, reviews, sale. So that's just how it's going to go. That's how it has to work here. So, today, I have an unboxing from... This is from... Uh, it's another Reddit purchase that I made, I believe. I'm not going to say the name because it's not like it was donated or anything. I purchased this. Oh, okay. I thought this was something totally different. So we have ourselves a Kershaw. You guys probably already saw that. Oh, yeah. This feels nice. So this is aluminum going on here. We have, it's kind of cool. Look at the aluminum. It creates its own backspacer because this actually right here, see if you guys can see it, the line, that is the seam between, between the frames. I'm going to call it frames instead of scales because they're not really scales, they're frames. Oh, nobody decided to uh, let us know of that. Not a huge deal, but you're kind of like, I like to know what I'm getting. Pocket clip is ambidextrous. This is the Kershaw Launch 6. So ever since I got my hands on the Launch 10, I have been so impressed that I'm on a quest to check out all these Launch series and, and just review them and feel them in hand because the Protex feel great. But I'll tell you what, after feeling my Protec Newport and feeling the Launch 10, they fire just as hard. If not, the Kershaw fires harder. Granted, the Kershaw is new, but I did not use my Protec Newport that much. Not saying by any means Kershaw is better than Protec when it comes to automatics. I'm just saying that, you know, there's a budgeter, budgeter, a more budgety option than just going straight to Protec. So we have a really cool built-in lanyard hole here. And I love how it's not emphasized by anything. That's super sweet. The pocket clip is just, eh. It's, it's not deep carry or anything, but that's okay. We got this cool uh, milling into this, what I'm assuming is 6061 aluminum. For those of you that don't know, 6061 aluminum's up. It's, it's a high mag, magnesium basically, aluminum, along with silicon content. It's a 6000 series. They keep calling it aircraft grade aluminum. And yeah, sure, it's used in aircrafts, but it's used in a ton of other things. Basically, it's, it's, it's an aluminum that's harder than some and not as hard as 5000 series aluminum. So it's just a solid piece of aluminum. I mean, it, it, you guys can go into the alloy details all you want, but don't be fooled by the aircraft grade. That's just a sales tactic. It's it's a good aluminum, but all alloys are good depending on their current usage, right? So, looks like we have a non-free spinning pivot. So we got... Or we could just say captive. I mean, captive works just as well in that case, too. The American flag, clearly Kershaw is made in America, which is pretty sweet. These look like T6 screws, but there's only two right there. But the pivot also looks T6. This is the Kershaw Launch 6, so it's going to be a little bit older. You know, some of the stuff that we need nowadays, but we didn't need back then. You know, you take that for what you will. So you guys ready for this first flip? One, two, three. So, I was impressed and not impressed, and extremely unimpressed now. So much blade play in this. And it does not fire that hard, but it fires hard enough. I'm going to probably chop this part of the video out. You guys know me, when I get something that's not completely centered, I want to try and center it before I move on. So that's what we're going to try to do. Be right back. And we are back. So... Before I move on, ooh, that is a T8. It is deceivingly large. Slarge. Deceivingly slarge. Very cool. Makes me a little bit happier. All right. Tiny little adjustments. Still got some blade play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to adjust it to where there's no blade play and then see if we can open and close it still. This thing doesn't feel like it has any, any force whatsoever. So it might be a very heavily loved Kershaw 
over time, which is fine. I expect the blades to, yeah, I don't know how long he had this knife. I expect the springs to wear down. All right, so there's no blade play. All right, so it still fires pretty good. I'm okay with that then. And we're back. <laughs> we had some room to go. I must have been mistaken there. All right, no blade play whatsoever. The tension on the way back feels fine. And it still opens just fine, so that's cool. So the one thing I noticed and that this blade reminded me of, even though it's just a straight spear point or whatever you want to call this, it reminded me a lot of the Kershaw bare knuckle. Because it has this wannabe sheep's foot, all they would have had to do is angle this down just a little bit more, and you could have called this a sheep's foot blade. One more time. So... For a big blade, it fires out good enough. This is CPM 154. That's pretty sweet. Ergonomics on this guy, not too shabby. I'm not mad at it. I actually really like this knife. I like the size for an automatic. I just wish, I, 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 I wish this fired out. It fires out hard enough, but... Like, I, I guess, you know, maybe I'm just expecting a lot. It's an older knife. So this is the Kershaw Launch 6. Really love this model. This is, if I were to carry an automatic on an everyday basis for an only knife, this is the type of model that I would be looking for. It's right in the middle ground. It's not quite a godfather, which is four inches long and looks like you're going to stab the crap out of somebody's throat. But it's also an extremely large blade to the point where you got a ton of cutting edge here. This is insane. That cutting edge right there alone, it's looking like almost four inches. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Put that in perspective. Here's your Kershaw Launch 10, along with your Spyderco Canis, Canis. And you can see the Canis is shorter and it's straight. This thing has probably about an inch longer of blade or cutting edge. And that's, I like that. That's a good thing. So, the Kershaw Launch 6. Pretty sweet looking. You guys know my affinity for the black on black. I kind of don't like that I like the black on black because I like modding my knives. But I also found that I can also tumble finish these coatings. It just takes a little bit longer. And I need some new media to do it with. But if I did want to kind of mod these things, that's where that would go. The only thing... So you got a little bit of billboarding here. Come on. Focus. Sunshine. So you got uh, the serial number made in the USA... Kershaw Automatic or whatever KA means. CPM 154. That is the best thing about the launch series. These are mostly, if not all, CPM 154, which is a fantastic blade steel. Absolutely fantastic. So that alone will let you use this knife for damn near ever. Before the spring gives out, or hold on, let me reword that. You won't have an issue with the blade steel. Your spring will probably wear out before this blade steel. There we go. But overall, very cool knife. Very excited to review this. And thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler. This is the unboxing of the Kershaw Launch 6. Not bad. And by the way, I removed all of the... <sighs> After using it a couple times, I'll probably have to get some Loctite on there. After removing... All of the blade play, this does lock up just fine, unlike the Protec Godfather, which I have to dissect and work with, and yada, yada, yada. So, I thoroughly like this knife, actually. This first impressions of this knife are very good. I'm excited to review it. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe. Have a great freaking day.